What's going on with some of this mixed messaging? Um, you know, China welcoming foreign direct investment, or at least seemingly welcoming foreign direct investment, at the same time putting up restrictions on U.S. businesses. How should investors view this? Yeah, first of all, I mean, this is the national security view ascendant in Beijing right now. Uh, that is driving everything. In sectors where they think reliance on American firms, software, hardware, anything you talk about, uh, is going to become a national security threat, they want American companies out, extricated, gone. Um, where, of course, they need American technology and information uh, and access to the IP in order to ultimately eventually become lead players in those sectors themselves, they're going to welcome foreign investment. That is the paradigm or the framework, really, uh, that investors need to fully comprehend and, and move forward on the basis of. You know, that's a really interesting dynamic. So your word, extricating, they want the U.S. businesses out. But at the same time, we just saw Tim Cook on that panel just there uh, when Eunice was talking. And also, he was in China opening up a new Apple store. So how do you explain that? Um, one of the big industries in China that they seemingly were trying to protect was the mobile phone business, Huawei in particular, but still welcoming a Tim Cook, still opening up new stores. I mean, explain just, it seems like almost a bipolar view of U.S. business. Well, you know, Apple, as far as its finished products, its, its iPhones is concerned, is, of course, having a very tough time in, in China, given the local competition and the fact that local companies have gotten tremendous amount of state subsidies and other support uh, from Beijing. But at the same time, Apple is very important to China because it you know, has factories in China. And China, of course, is very important to Apple itself, uh, given that supply chain integration that we're talking about. Uh, so that makes sense. I think it goes back to the same concept that I, I just described here. Where China has an, an advantage, whether it's in terms of jobs or access to technology, uh, retaining a critical position in the, in the supply chain, it certainly wants those firms there. Apple's not the only one. Look at pharmaceuticals. They want more American pharmaceutical investment and presence in China rather than less. Big national security risk from America, of course. Okay. Um, new report out that uh, China's direct foreign or foreign direct investment, I should say, fell about 20 percent last year, down to 30 billion. I'm going to show you some, a number and show the audience as well. Mexico, on the other hand, saw $36 billion in foreign direct investment, pretty much rising about 1 percent year over year. But still, as you can see, a very strong number. Is it possibly just things have shifted? Um, U.S. companies especially want their supply chains that you just mentioned closer to home, and the trend is going to just be lower no matter what China does when it comes to that foreign investment. Yeah, look, I think... Uh, if you know, China's been one of the biggest beneficiaries, I think, of this concept of nearshoring, of friendshoring that uh, we're trying to promote how, here in America. Because also what you're seeing, by the way, is a lot of Chinese companies uh, partnering up with plants in Mexico and opening up plants in Mexico uh, in order to continue supplying the American market, but away from China, uh, so that they can evade the tariffs and the trade uh, sanctions and so forth. Um, so that's a trend that may very well continue. But I think the top line numbers uh, probably hide the fact that ultimately, again, it is Chinese companies who are, uh, at least in part, uh, benefiting or, uh, you know, from, from this shift.